is Friday, so you know what that means. It's time for some great food. Yay! So let's head over, to, head over to the Wood Harbor Kitchen. Winnie Moranfill is joining us. Hey, Winnie. Hello over there. Welcome to Great Food. You know, sometimes we drink wine here in the Wood Harbor Kitchen, but we don't always have a chance to sip alongside a world-class sommelier. But today is special. I have with me Delyn Proctor, who is the Penfolds Winemaking Ambassador for the Americas. Welcome, Delyn. Thank you, and good morning, Wendy. Happy to be here. Well, we're so glad to have you. So I have a list here of some of your accolades, and I'm just going to name a few because we don't have all day. <laughs> um, you were named Best Sommelier in America by Wine and Spirits Magazine in 2008. You were named as one of wine enthusiasts' 40 under 40 top tastemakers, and you were also one of four featured sommeliers in the acclaimed wine documentary, Somme. And there's going to be a sequel to that, I understand. Yes, there is. We're very, very fortunate to have su the success we had with the first film and now on February 2nd we're releasing the follow-up globally. Can you tell me just a little bit about that film? Absolutely. So Psalm 2 or mm -hmm. Psalm Into the Bottle actually dives a bit more into why we even drink wine. Let's talk about mm -hmm. vintages and styles and producers and regions and soils and we bring it all together. We talk about whether or not sommeliers matter. We talk about point scores and it's, it's, oh. it's going to be a wonderful film. It is a wonderful film but now the world will see how great oh, that right. film is. Yes. That's great. So, again, we're really thrilled to have you here. And you live in Napa Valley. I do. Here you are in our great city of Des Moines telling us about Penfold's wines. Absolutely. So let's, let's taste something and talk ab about these. Ab absolutely, we will. Now, we have two incredible wines, one of which I am going to start with that has mm -hmm. already been decanting and breathing and ready to go in your glass. Mm -hmm. This is Penfold's Bin 389, a wine that has been in production since 1960. That's more than 55 consecutive vintages of winemaking for this particular wine. Now, I should say, as Australia's most venerated winery, we are celebrating our 172nd year of winemaking wow. this year. So you Founded guys didn't have prohibition. They didn't have prohibition down there to mess things up. Nah. <laughs> they didn't have that break. There was no 1919, <laughs> 1920 to 1933 That's era for great. us. Not at all. <laughs> oh, good. But we've got these two incredible glasses, decanted, poured, ready to go, and I think it's time to dive in, Winnie. Yes, all righty. We shall. So as you get a great nose of this wine, I'll chat a bit more about it. This is a wonderful blend of cat Cabernet Sauvignon, 51%, mm -hmm. and Shiraz, 49%. It's almost 50-50. Almost 50-50. Now, you know, Shiraz is one of these varietals that I hear the in the winemaking world people say everybody loves but nobody drinks. In other words, people love it, but you don't see it on wine lists by the glass very often in America. In anyway. America. Tell us what is going what why Shiraz just hasn't taken off here. I'm it, so curious. It seems that Syrah, the great being autochthonous mm -hmm. to France, is is very popular there. But when it was New World eyes, uh -huh. of course, as you do in California, of course as we do in Australia, it seems that it may not be as cool as Cabernet Sauvignon right. or Pinot Noir or right. even Sauvignon Blanc or Riesling or Chardonnay, of course. Mm -hmm. But the beauty about a wine like this is once you open this bottle, you put this glass in front of a guest or a diner or someone in a wine bar, they get that wonderful mm -hmm. opulence of mocha and black cherry and black pepper, a little bit of cedar off of the nose, they're hooked. Right. Just open the bottle, get the <laughs> glass in front of them, and the next thing you know, you're going to have diners requesting Shiraz everywhere they go. That's great. And uh, it, Australia, Shiraz actually grows really well in Australia, right? I Incredibly mean, it's, uh, yeah. well. So, I mean, it's a great it's great to get an Australian Shiraz. Indeed, right. indeed. We've, we've had it in Australia since the late 1700s, and we've cultivated it incredibly well. It suits that very, very dry and warm climate. And as you can see, it gives you those opulent and unctuous, rich flavors. Mm. at the same time being incredibly balanced. Yes, indeed. Mm. Mm. Now the beauty about this wine is the so fact that it has good. incredible ageability. Mm -hmm. This is a wine that can age at least 35 years and actually last into its 55th and 60th year lying down in your cellar. Mm. That's the beauty about a wine of this provenance and of this esteem. Well, do you suggest if people buy this wine that they age it or can they drink it now? The beauty about our wines, mm -hmm. our multi-regional philosophy and how we blend, how we make wines. Our wines are approachable mm -hmm. upon purchase. Good. Winnie, 
buy a bottle, take it home, open it tonight. It's Friday. <laughs> but at the same time, if you buy two, you drink one tonight, you say, wow, I really love that. I wonder what it's going to taste like in 20 years. Guess what? You can. You can. Or 30 or 40. There you go. You know, I mean, I think that's really interesting because I think people get very confused. Like, do I have to age this? Do I not have to age this? But it's nice to know with your wines, you don't have to, like, look it up and try to, you know, try to go online. Do I need to age this wine? You can drink it or not. Indeed. Or, or lay it down for a while. And if you are going to look anything up, you can easily look up our point scores. Oh, okay. We have wines like Ben 389, aka Baby Grange, and Saint Henri. Wines like this receive at least a 90 point score. Wow. Wine Spectator, Wine Advocate, Wine Enthusiasts, every Huge. single year. Huge. As a matter of fact, 90% of our portfolio, 90 plus point scores, vintage after vintage after vintage. We're fortunate for that. That's great. Well, fortunate and you work very hard for that. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. you have expertise. <laughs> So, um, you, you, these are what I would consider special occasion wines. Yes. I mean, they're lovely, and I would take this if I were going to a steakhouse or something. I would take this to a steakhouse, you know, the, the high end steakhouse, yeah. and, you know, have them, uh, you know, open it for me. But ev on the everyday level, on the, the days we're usually in the Wood Harbor kitchen without you, <laughs> I understand Penfolds does have a, you know, a, an entry level tier. Tell us about those. We do, we do. Now, as you, as you alluded to, $70 global retail here. One 100 global retail for Saint Henri, but at the same time we make beautiful wines that we've actually been making since 1976. Those wines are known as our Kunanga Hill I've Range from that. Penfolds, $9.99. These wines are for everyone, every day, incredibly affordable, and everyone can drink them. Yes, right. $9.99 is great. I mean, that is a Tuesday night wine. It is. It is. <laughs> that is super. From $9.99 to our esteemed wine, our flagship, Penfolds Grange, Grange Shiraz. Shiraz. That's nine fifty a bottle, oh, just okay. shy of a thousand. <laughs> but anywhere from ten to one thousand, we've got something for every mm -hmm. single wine drinker mm -hmm. out there. Everyone. That is so good to know. So, outside of Australia, what are some of your favorite wine regions? Oh, favorite wine regions! You have to take me away from my home, don't you? That's okay. okay. Just, just you know, you I, know, because you can't only drink one wine. You're right. right you're <laughs> right. I love the incredible reds and whites from Burgundy. I love the reds and whites from Bordeaux, big fan of Bordeaux Blanc. But then Italy, it's a place I've, I've even lived and visited oh. Oh, a ton of times, a ton of times. Uh, I love wines from Brunello. I love wines from Barolo and Barbaresco. I even love the Barolo of the South. It's a great variety. We call Norello Mescalese mm -hmm. and Norello Capuccio, these wonderful wines from Mount Etna. It's not wow. Nebbiolo like you find in Barolo, but the same sort of style, a bit more tannic, a bit uh, yeah. less acidic, and just wonderful, wonderful mm. style of wines. Mm. So I love Italian wines, I love French wines, but look, I live in Napa Valley. Right. I love Napa Valley <laughs> Cabernet. I love California Central Coast Pinot Noir. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Now, one more question. How important, oh, let's let's take a look at where we can follow you. We, you are at wine Wino Delin P, that's which it. I think is great because it's wino, you know, a classy kind of wino, so that's easy. And you can also follow Penfolds on Twitter and Facebook. And um, one should not forget to look for your, first of all, you know, Rent Psalm, oh, thank you. the <laughs> first one. And then, um, you know, on February 2nd, we have to check out your um, iTunes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Good to know. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming here Fortunate to Des Moines. To be here. We're so lucky to have you here. And we will be right back with more great day.